Eat less, exercise more, is the time-honored mantra of weight loss. As such, if someone is overweight, we often put it down to a lack of discipline on their part. However, if we scratch the surface, we find there can be much in the interactions of chemicals, especially hormones, in our cells that affects weight loss and gain. Today, Dr. Krishna Donapati returns to Vital Science to explain how the hierarchy of hormones, including cortisol, insulin, and growth hormone, factor into weight loss. We'll hear how he helped a long-term obese woman to lose weight through detoxifying her gut and her liver, rather than through weight loss drugs like Ozempic. Welcome to Vital Science, where we learn how to get healthier from all angles, from the biochemical and nutritional to the things we do that nourish our minds and our souls. I'm Brendan Fallon. Dr. Donapathy is specialized in obesity medicine and functional medicine, which optimizes health through nutrition and lifestyle. Dr. Donapathy, welcome to Vital Science. Good to be here, Brendan. And fantastic to have you on to talk about this issue of obesity and dealing with it from a, more of a, a cellular standpoint. I, I think it's commonly perceived that you, if you see someone with an obesity problem that they might have perhaps a psychological issue or they have, they have some kind of addiction or a problem with, with just controlling what they eat. But um, I mean, I've never had that problem. My problem is more the opposite. So I, I have a more of a problem controlling, putting on weight. So I, I assume there's more to it than that. And I know that you, you started out in you know, obesity medicine. So can you shed some light on what, what might be at play from a, a metabolic standpoint? Yeah, absolutely. This is such a uh, miscommunicated, misunderstood topic about obesity. That simply the idea that if someone is to lose weight, they just need to eat less and exercise more. And I wish that was the case. And that is a, um, a mathematical equation, you know, eat less, less energy and exercise more, expend more energy. But the body does not and the cells of our body do not work on mathematics, they work on chemistry. So biochemistry is much more important and weight gain and weight loss is 100% biochemical and all the hormones that are attached to that processes. And so that old saying, eat less and exercise more, just does not work. One obvious trend that we, we can see in society is that people tend to put on weight as they get older. Is that a, a sign or is that, does that give us a hint, a clue as to what, what might be happening metabolically or in, on a cellular level that leads to weight gain? So Brandon, the hormones when we're at different stages of life change. When we're born, when we're a toddler, when we're a young adult, middle age, and so on and so on as we get older, the hormone status in many, many different ways is uh, changes from each decade. And that's why when you look at someone who's in their early teens, very slender, uh, able to put on muscle, less likely to put on body fat, and so on. But that um, changes as we get into our 30s, 40s, and 50s, where it becomes easier to gain weight, especially body fat, I should say, and then more difficult to lose it. So hormones have a very big influence on how and what kind of weight we're talking about. And so weight really should be measured in well, two major forms, uh, muscle weight and body fat weight, but we are also made out of water and bone. And so those are the four components. So yes, it does change with age. And the metabolism also changes as a direct result of the change in hormone status. When you mention hormones, what comes to mind first is like women suffer a loss of estrogen with uh, menopause and men's testosterone levels also tend to decline as well as they, as they get older. Are these specific hormones factors in, in weight gain? Yeah, so very good question. Um, and you seem to have some insight about the, all of this, but hormones do have a hierarchy. There are certain hormones that will trump over some other hormones. At the top of the list, I'll, I'd have to say, the best hormone to have is growth hormone. It's at the top of the pyramid. And there's other hormones that come below that, say for instance, our stress hormone cortisol can influence a variety of different hormones below that. So that's a little lower on the hierarchy. So if cortisol, for instance, or growth hormone are not at their optimal levels, then you're gonna have an influence on estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, insulin, um, thyroid hormone, so thyroxin will be affected as well. So uh, understanding a, a little bit now about what might 
lead to weight loss in terms of hormones and cellular activity. What is, how, how do you deal with this? How do you respond to this on a treatment level? So uh, again, framing from a age standpoint is kind of important to understand is someone going into, like you were mentioning, if estrogens are off because of menopause in women, say for instance, then it is maybe prudent to check those hormones. But it's more prudent to check to see, is there a hierarchy hormone? Unfortunately, when we think about what's going on in the United States and the amount of stress that we have, people experience, whether it's from work or lifestyle issues or the kind of foods that we eat, cortisol has a much um, important, more importance for me, at least, to look at that to see what is going on. Tied very closely to cortisol is insulin hormone. And cortisol will easily create insulin resistance by itself. So those are some of the early hormones I'll look at. If those are all appropriate, I might go on to male and female hormones and definitely thyroid hormone for everyone. Maybe you or someone close to you has had trouble losing weight. What do you think about the eat less, exercise more mantra? How do you feel about the ideas on weight loss presented in this video today? You can go to epochtv.com and find vital signs in the talk shows tab to leave your comments. Also, you can share the health insights in this video with friends or family by clicking on the share arrow below. This certainly takes the conversation in an interesting direction, Dr. Donapathy. So if I understand correctly, the stress hormone cortisol can factor heavily into people's weight loss. Just coming out of the pandemic with people's elevated stress due to that situation, I can see how this would really be an issue in, in current times. Is cortisol a, a hormone that you're particularly uh, responding to in treatment for people, that you're advising people in, in how to deal with? Uh, absolutely, Brandon. And that understanding um, our own personal stress, and there's three kinds of stressors. There's mental stress. I don't think I need to explain what mental stress is. There's physical stress, just what is taxing us as a human body. Um, getting up early, going to bed late, um, doing strenuous activities or strenuous exercise are all some forms of physical stress. And then there's physiological stress. Physiological stress is the one that is a little bit more mysterious because it's something going on in, in the inside the body that we don't necessarily sense and feel. So it's more, more on a cellular level. And uh, I would say that between mental and physiological stress, those are probably the two more important ones. And then even when we talk about um, the effect of cortisol, but there's also, and I know we were just talking a little bit about hormones. I was only uh, e even just talking about endogenous hormones. What does the human body make? I mean, it still begs the question, what are the exogenous or environmental hormones that are found, uh, whether it's from our air, water, or food? Those are just as important, the kind of like what you may have heard of as the forever hormones. Some of those can have very obesogenic influence on the human body and human cells as well. Can you give an, an example of one of those that would possibly impact someone's inability to lose weight? Yeah, uh, bisphenol A is one of them. BPA has been around for quite some time. It has a weak estrogenic effect, but it also has an obesogenic effect. And looking back and thinking about how babies are born and what are they fed, uh, our culture has moved somewhat away from breastfeeding to bottle feeding. And it was not too long ago that BPA was found in every one of the milk bottles. You know, in the past you know, several decades ago, we never used plastics uh, as much as we do now. And instead, babies, if they were fed, they were fed with glass bottles. And I still encourage that if it's absolutely necessary for supplemental feeding is to use glass. But BPA is the biggest one. And now, if you go to the stores and you'll see everything is, they want to tout BPA free. Well, darn it. Uh, the Many generations have already been exposed to bisphenol A. And it's now substituted with bisphenol S. And it's not any better. In fact, it's worse.